I would say the economy is the number one issue that people will be concerned about. The issues that I also pick up when I go around on the doorstep or when I'm out having my surgeries, people are concerned about planning um, and about transport issues around here. We've seen a lot of the old mills and factory sites being demolished and replaced with housing. Now, okay, that's a good use of the brownfield sites. But where do people, you know, th th where do those people then go to work? Where do those people's children go to school? Uh, you've got to think about the health services that they then use. And of course, because those employment sites have changed into residential sites, they have to then travel to a other areas for work. And so that puts a strain on our roads and on our public transport. So that's why that transport issue has always been high on the agenda. I think it's crucial to invest in transport, um, not just because it, it is a sure way of helping our economy. So if business feels that it can get its workforce around a region better, if people are able to um, you know, transport between the cities and the towns better, if people are able to commute uh, efficiently, then that can only be good for our economy. And I think it's particularly important in the north of England because frankly, over the last sort of 20, 30 years, we have not seen the investment that we needed to see. So um, transport links between the cities is poor. Uh, I was on a select committee visit that went to Wrexham and I thought, well, I'll get the train from Wrexham to Leeds. It took me nearly four and a half hours and I had to change four trains to get here. Yeah, that's just ridiculous. Um, the equivalent time in the south of England would be less than half of that. So I'm really pleased that we're spending billions of pounds upgrading the rail network in the north and we're now t seriously talking about things like High Speed 3, which would be a connection direct from between Leeds and Manchester. If I get re-elected as the MP for here, um, I want to carry on the campaigns that I've been involved with, which is um, particularly looking at the airport link, you know, I want us to, to try and make that a reality. Um, it's about supporting local business um, and encouraging people to invest here so that we can create the jobs that local people need. I want to see more investment in wider transport um, infrastructure issues. The rail link is, is one of the options being looked at for, you know, how we get passengers there. It could be years, but if we don't start lobbying and campaigning for it now, then you know it will never happen and I, you know, this for me is the start of a hope probably a fairly long campaign but a significant campaign you know we're spending billions of pounds at the moment improving the rail network across the north of england it would be really odd to me if we didn't have one of the largest airports connected to that rail link i mean that's what we need to achieve let's get this proper northern economic powerhouse as make it a reality and connect all of our infrastructure together Leeds Bradford Airport has seen significant growth over the last 10 years. We've probably seen an extra million passengers a year flying out of the airport. But actually getting to the airport is still along the same roads that people have been using for decades. Um, my concern is that the projections are saying that we'll probably see even more, millions more people using the, uh, the airport. And if they continue on the existing road structure, that's going to be horrendous for my constituents. My, my view is that the only alternative is to actually have a rail link. It's a, it's a new way of getting people to the airport that will be quick and convenient. And I hope that the government will seriously look at that as an, as an option when considering the connectivity. Leeds Bradford International Airport has been one of the fastest growing airports in the UK over the last five years. We've had average growth of around about 7% despite the uh, economic downturn. And in 2012-13, we were actually the fastest growing airport in the UK with over 12% growth. Part of our growth at Leeds Bradford is going to be on the basis of devising and developing increased public transport links to the airport. And we believe, and a lot of people in our city region now believe, that a rail link to the airport, linking the airport with the centre of Leeds, across Yorkshire to Harrogate and York itself will actually transform the way that people gain access to and from the airport. We know talking to our airline partners they want it. We know talking to people who are our customers here with our airlines want it. And we've been talking to regional stakeholders and they're now increasingly believing that a rail link is a good option as part of the regional transport infrastructure right across Yorkshire. 
as a precursor for HS2 arriving right on our doorstep? Looking at youth unemployment, it's been a problem for a long time um, and we have seen the number of people who are not in education, employment or training actually go up uh, over many, many years. That's now starting to fall because we're... You can take it from that's now starting to fall. Okay. <laughs> that's now starting to fall because we're seeing um, a whole raft of measures being introduced, not least the huge number of apprenticeships that are being offered. Um, I think one of the problems I had with the way things were done previously is that there was just a... Uh, you know, a, a sort of everybody, the, the drive was to get everybody to go to university, it seemed, but obviously not everybody will. What about those that, you know, don't go to university? And I feel that they felt slightly devalued because we weren't encouraging the sort of training in skills and manufacturing and in a, other, you know, sort of lines of work. But the apprenticeships that we're offering mean that people can go and learn a skill whilst we're earning a wage, and that, I think, has been a significant contribution to bringing down the youth unemployment in this country. When I was going around the hospital that I was made aware of the potential closure of the heart surgery unit um, and I thought that was just bonkers frankly because Leeds is the centre of a high population area um, we have a high number of people from a South Asian community background and there is a prevalence of heart disease within that community. And so it would seem strange to close the unit in Leeds and, as was proposed, make people go all the way up to Newcastle. So um, I decided to you know, spearhead the political campaign to save the unit. Congenital heart disease means that a child is born with a condition rather than a lifestyle patient that may um, have heart disease in later life. Um, there's a, a roughly 40 different defects, some less complex, some extremely complex. Um, and some children also have a variety of other conditions as well. Um, so the Leeds unit in, in terms of codependent services that are available is, that, is, is a fantastic unit because it may well be that a child not only has heart problems but they may have uh, digestional problems, uh, they may have skeletal problems, you know, there could be a variety of things that can be um, wrong with, with the child but yet yeah, everything is under one roof at the Leeds unit which is fantastic for the patient and, and the service that they, they get. We've recently um, funded a machine that helps um, nursing staff predominantly. So um, years gone by, there would be monitors on the beds and the nurses would be um, clocking up the mileage uh, throughout the day, to and fro from beds to bed spaces to look at babies, to look at children. We have um, a number of bays that they would be checking on. Um, we've just provided some equipment whereby um, the, the monitoring system is on the nurses unit so they can check um, what's going on on the screens. It's quite revolutionary equipment. It cost about £110,000 and it's made their life much easier and it's also helped the young children as well so it means that the child can, can come away from their beds um, and feel safe doing that. Um, they cause mayhem but they can come away from the beds and there's a wireless connection so that means that uh, no matter where the child is we can track them um, and it also um, it also records the, the, and monitors the, the heart for the last 24 hours. So if the child suddenly has a seizure, a seizure, they can check why that happened. They can also check whilst they're sleeping what's going on with the heart as well. This is a really good clear readings um, that, that they can access.